I thought I'd do a quick video just to show the new degassing lance I've just made uh, to get the hydrogen gas out of my molten aluminium. But before I get to the actual lance, uh, what's supposed to happen? Well, we all know that hydrogen has a bad habit of dissolving in aluminium and the hydrogen comes out of solution when the aluminium solidifies and makes salt and pepper type porosity right throughout the casting. Now, let's say we've got a crucible sitting here full of molten aluminium and the standard trick is to bubble a purge gas through the aluminium with the idea that the hydrogen that's sitting in the aluminium will move into the bubbles of the purge gas and then get taken out of the melt. Now, several things have to happen for this to, to occur. First of all, the hydrogen has to move from wherever it is in the melt to the surface of the bubble. Then it has to move across that surface and then it has to move away from the surface within the bubble. Of those three things, the slowest is the movement of the hydrogen across the actual surface of the bubble. So it follows from that, that the more surface area you've got of bubbles, the better your hydrogen remover will be. This means that the smaller the bubble, the better. If you have 10 millimeter bubbles compared to say one millimeter bubbles, on the one millimeter bubbles for the same amount of gas, there's going to be 10 times the surface area and you'll get 10 times the hydrogen removal. So the trick is to have very small bubbles. In fact, it's generally reckoned if your bubble size is above five mil, you're wasting your time, and it's better if it's one to two mil. Um, commercially, they use these rotary impeller degassers where the impeller that the gas is coming out of spins and this chops the bubbles up very fine. I've developed an alternative technique uh, of a static lance that seems to produce very fine bubbles. I started off making them quite small. Here's a very small one. Um, and the idea is the gas goes down here and it comes out through these little slits that are uh, held between, but that's bolted together so that almost closes the slits off. The slits are actually only about five thousandths of an inch deep. Now, I've actually made various sizes of ones of these over the years. Here's a slightly bigger one that's actually done quite a lot of use now and it's quite badly oxidised so it's time that one had to be replaced. This time I thought I'd make something a little bigger and this is it. I've decided to go bigger because when you stand them up, when they're up there like that in the metal, there's a tendency for the gas to sort of come in and come towards the central column here and so that you wind up with only bubbles sort of coming up in this area here rather than right out on the whole melt. This leads to some problems. Anyway, here is the inside of that one. This is just flat and plain. Uh, here we've got our five thousand deep slits. There's actually 32 of them around this one and the rest of this arrangement's just to make certain the gas is fairly evenly distributed out to this groove here. Um, the central bolt has a groove in it so that the gas can get from the tube out to there. Now this bit's made out of cast iron. This tube happens to be a piece of 3-8 stainless steel and it's nice uh, in that it takes a 3-8 uh, UNF thread that I can screw everything together with. These three outer bits here are simply a protection sheath. If the aluminium gets at this tube, it'll cut through it in a matter of 30 seconds or so. So I use this, which is just a mild steel sheath, but it's been oxidised by heat and then painted with a boron nitride um, wash that helps protect it. You can see that this lance that I used to use, the tip that I used to use here, that's got this wash on it and it protects it quite well. It doesn't provide quite the same protection for the sleeve and I've had to grind bits of attack where the aluminium's got it out uh, several times. Before I use this, I will oxidise it at something like dull red heat to make certain it's got a good layer of oxide and then I will uh, paint it with this, this wash. The only problem with that wash is it's rather expensive stuff. Um, these tubes it's just mild steel as I say and I drill them with a gun drill, just as a standard gun drill. I don't have a gun drill long enough unfortunately to uh, make this in one piece. 
uh, which would be nice if I did because the aluminium gets in the gaps sometimes. Now, here's a smaller one that I use for a smaller crucible. This is the complete device here. This one I actually have a graphite sheath here which is much better. There's my degassing head itself. I have this cover here that fits just loosely on the top of the crucible. And this weight sits on top of the graphite sleeve to stop it floating in the aluminium. Uh, if it floats, I might add, what happens is the aluminium gets in here and destroys the tube. Right, so that sits there. The cover here keeps the atmosphere immediately above the metal, uh, mainly argon, so that the furnace atmosphere, which will of course contain a fair bit of moisture from the burning of the fuel, can't get at the metal. Right. Now we can see that it's, it's bubbling, it's just through water, but water and molten aluminium behave remarkably the same. Um, you can see from the ruler there, uh, comparing with the bubbles, that I'm getting sort of a 2 to 5 millimetre bubble size, occasionally down to 1. Don't let the larger bubbles on the surface fool you, they, they tend to coalesce when they get on the top and move together. Um, and that's at a flow rate of about 1.5 litres a minute, and typically I would degas my aluminium for around 7 minutes. Now, the gas I'm using is commercial welding grade argon. Um, nitrogen would be just as viable. Now we're about to try the new degassing lance. I have, as I said I would do, heated it up to oxidise it on the surface, uh, then let it cool down, and then I've painted it with this grey uh, boron nitride wash that you can see on it, uh, in order to protect it from the attack of the molten metal. We'll just turn the gas on. The flow rate of about a liter and a half a minute, and then we'll just just clean the rubbish off the top a little bit first. That'll do. Just pull it to one side. It'll do for the purposes of this, and then we'll go in and we'll see what happens. At the moment, the bubbles are very large, but I suspect as everything warms up, they'll cut down in size. At least I hope they will. All right. Now we'll now give that seven minutes. Okay. We'll just lift this and have a little look to see what sort of bubbles we've got. Can you see them? They look a bit big, but it's a bit hard to tell, of course, because they're um, they're all under the oxide skin. Anyway, that's about the end of the time. So I'll remove this. Turn the gas on. Okay. I've decided that the 32 slits that I had here for the gas to come out may be a bit few too many, so I'm going to remove these, just face them off in the lathe, and cut another 16. Nothing very special about any of this. I mean, the whole thing was just made in, in pretty much uh, very ordinary sort of lathe work. So I've just got this part of the degassing head uh, set up reasonably true in the lathe, and I'll simply face off the... Uh, Slits that are there. Now I'll recut the slots. I've just got a tool mounted on its edge to do this with a with a nice sharp point. And then we'll take that to the outside here and just touch the surface with it. That should be it, I think.
wind it in five thousandths of an inch and now begin to index it you don't need to be very accurate with this of course I'm just going to do it quite crudely using the by counting the number of teeth on one of the drive gears here in the back of the lathe first one four teeth at a time one two three four I think the only thing that is reasonably critical uh, is that the slots all be all be about five thousandths of an inch deep. They'll all be the same. And I, I've chosen five thousand. I have tried them at ten. That seemed to work too. But I think the five's a bit better. I think it does give a finer bubble size, and that's what it's all about. I'll have to deepen some of these ones through here to make certain the gas gets through properly, but that's no big deal. Five seconds with the Dremel, and we're done with that. This is the lance after it's been modified, sitting here undergoing a water test. And they've got a, a ruler there so you can get some idea of the bubbles. There's a little bit of soap in the water, which is helping to hold the bubbles in the size they come up. But it's the size here where we really want to look you can just sort of see they're very very fine they're quite fine when they first come up which is exactly what we want now that's at a flow rate of about one and a half liters a minute let's up the flow rate to double that now we're starting to get eruptions on the surface you might say it's getting a bit too turbulent and it's really not the sort of thing you'd want so we'll drop it about to, down to about one, which is about there, and it'll calm down again, I guess. It looks to me like about one or one half. Here's the size of bubbles that are coming up at the moment. Now they're, yes, I don't know. I guess I'll have to look at them on the screen later, but they look to be... Oh, I don't know, two to two mil, one to two mil, maybe one to three. But it's the size they first come up that's important, of course, because that's what they're going to be like through the metal. I'm reasonably happy with that, but I think it's going to have to run probably at about there, which is one and a half um, uh, litres a minute, which is what I normally use anyway. Just push some of the foam to one side. We get an idea of the bubbles coming up. Yeah, I guess they're within the well, one to five mil range, so it's probably not too bad. Probably about as good as you'd ever get with static degassing. You'd need to go rotary to get any finer bubbles than that, I think.